So, whether you're using an existing map editor like Tiled or Mappy, or you're creating your own, the maps are going to have a structured format that they will be in. The map format will adhere to a set of rules on how the map is portrayed in text. Additionally, these maps could be in XML format, JSON, Lua, or even some plain text that you define yourself. Back when I first started making map files, my maps looked like this. Each number signified what number on the tile sheet was being used, and the place of that number within the overall grid signified its XY coordinates on the actual map. Then, if I had multiple layers, I'd have separate grids, and it ended up looking like this. One of the advantages of this method is that you can sort of tell what the map looks like just from reading the plain text. I have a little more to say on grid-based maps and times that they would be handy, but I'll talk about that a bit later. These days, if I make a simple map format, it will look more like this. One line signifies one tile, and that one line holds all the properties for that tile. X, Y coordinates, plus a Z coordinate, or layer coordinate to show which tiles go on top of others. Um, collision data, and any other flags. Um, as far as storing NPC starting points, that might go in a separate type of map file, but in a similar sort of way. So Slash Jag from my IRC channel brought up a good point yesterday about having every tile, even empty tiles, in an array. One of the good things about storing all of the tiles, even the empty ones, means that you can quickly figure out the index of a tile based on an arbitrary XY coordinate. This helps you do collision without having to check all of the tiles for whether it's in range of the player. So say we have a player at some point on the map. The map is a 1D array rather than a 2D one because it's pretty much the same thing, and you can use modulus and division to find a grid's XY position. The player's coordinates are at 192, 160 in pixels, and we want to find the indices of the tile it's standing on and the eight surrounding tiles, just as a good region to check for collision. So first, since the coordinates are in pixels, we want to find the closest tile XY coordinates. We do this by dividing the player's X and Y coordinates by 32, which is the dimensions of my tiles for this map. The result is 6 and 5.5. From the Y coordinate we got, we can solve for the index by using the equation I wrote in cyan on the top. We have the Y coordinate and the width of the map, so getting the index is easy. From that, we can find the indices of all nine tiles immediately around the player. So with that method, you only need to do some simple math and you can get directly to the tile that you're looking for. Um, when you're only storing tiles that have data, you can't rely on the tiles to always be in some order or some location based on where they are in the array. Lately with my own projects, uh, my map files are small enough that I can store them in a standard vector and just iterate all, over all of them. Doing that, I check to see if it's within a region, and if it's not, it just gets skipped. But again, that's iterating through all of the tiles in an array. It's not necessarily efficient if you have something really big. Um, there are other ways you could store or sort your map data to make it more efficient, though. So my boyfriend suggested R trees for efficiently keeping track of tile regions, but he also does embedded programming for GPS devices for Garmin. So uh, while he works with maps all day, he has limited size and uh, memory he can use. Um, so that might be kind of overkill if you're making something that's pretty limited in size. Speaking of regions, another way you could store collision is based on drawn regions on the map, rather than specific tile properties. Gooding12 suggested this in the comments of my last video. Specifying regions is also pretty commonly used for maps, usually with things like adventure games or games with more dynamic, less square terrain. So how do you place tiles in a map editor? Well, I'm not going to sit here and write a map editor for you since it's time consuming. Um, even if you don't understand how to make a map editor right now, don't let analysis paralysis get in the way. You just have to try to work it out a bit at a time. This is just one of the many parts of programming where you use those problem-solving skills that you gain from doing so well at your math classes and sit down and sketch out a solution. So if you're having trouble getting started, break it up into smaller problems, such as how do you display the tile set so that the user can select the current brush that they're going to draw with? How do you figure out whether the mouse is clicking one of the tiles in, in the tile set? How do you know when the mouse is clicking in the canvas area where you actually draw the map? What do you do with the coordinates of a click to create a tile and give it properties? 
And when saving the file, what information do you need and how do you get it from the classes that you have? Now, saving your map file would just be a matter of iterating through all of the tiles you have and um, saving it either in like a plain text format, XML, whatever. It could also be saved in a binary format. Um, and that can just be loaded directly into the game without any sort of file parsing, but there's some stuff you have to worry about. And you can find more resources on that online. How do you figure out whether the mouse is clicking 